Block Blender is a tool that lets you turn any 3D model into Minecraft blocks, and it could be a game changer for people trying to plan complex builds. It works especially well on photo scans, but you can also use it for text, images, videos, you can model things in real time, and I'm not sure why you'd want to do this, but you can use it on animated models too. Turn your purple models into purple mo- pur pure pur 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 You can download it on Gumroad or Blender Market, and yes, there is a free version. Stick around until the end to see what Block Blender is really capable of. Making this tool was quite a process, and I wasn't even sure if it was possible to do. There were a few roadblocks that almost made me give up. <coughs> My goal was to turn an object into a bunch of cubes, and then check the color of the original object and place the correct color cube in that spot. I already knew some of this was possible because I did it with Lego bricks a few weeks ago. Turning an object into cubes is pretty easy. Make sure you're using Blender 3.4 to use all of the nodes that you're seeing here. Start with a mesh to volume node, make sure the resolution is set to size, and then get a distribute points in volume node set to grid. Get an instance on points node and use a cube as the instance object. Now, if you use the same value for the voxel size, the spacing, and the scale, your object will now be made of cubes. Getting the colors working was a lot more complicated because instead of just changing the colors of the cubes, I needed to compare the object color to a bunch of Minecraft blocks. The first method I tried was pretty close. The object I was using had an image for the color, so I brought the image into geometry nodes and used these sample nodes to get the color of every point on our model. I made a few different colored cubes, and then I made a node group that took the image color and compared it to the color of my blocks. If the color was close enough, then it would instance that object onto the corresponding points. This worked, but there were a few problems. I had to put all of the colors and objects in manually, and if there were no colors that matched close enough, then parts of the model were just left blank. This is the first time that I almost gave up, but then I talked to Nugget on Discord and he shared this idea with me. The idea is really similar and it works by finding the distance between the object image color and the color of the blocks. Color is usually three different values, a red, green, and blue value. In Blender, we can use these values like their X, Y, and Z coordinates and plot them in 3D space. So if we're doing this with a few colors, we can now see how similar they are to each other based on their proximity. So we're checking the distance between our block color and the object color, and if the distance is smaller than whatever we set it to, the group will choose the block that we tell it to. It will then take the distance between the two colors and send it to the next group. In here, if the distance is smaller than in the previous group, the object will be replaced with the new one. If it's larger, then it's ignored and it checks that distance with the next group. This ensures that the chosen block is always the one with the closest color. I still have to set the color and object index manually, but it worked well enough that I decided to move forward. The next problem I had to solve was getting all of the full Minecraft blocks into Blender. I decided to leave out things like slabs and stairs because figuring out how to rotate them correctly would make this way more complex. Maybe I'll tackle that in the future. I really didn't want to individually unwrap and place textures for every block, so I tried to find a way to download them, but everything I found was missing most of the blocks. Sam from my Discord server told me about Minecraft Debug Worlds, which is a world that has every single block in every state. He was even nice enough to get that into Blender for me using Mineways. So I opened it in Blender and saw that everything was a single object, which means that I would have to manually look at each block, decide if I wanted to use it, and then separate it into its own object. There were easily thousands of blocks in here, because blocks that could be waterlogged or rotated were all listed as being different. I knew this was going to take too long, so I figured I'd try to make a super flat world, and I'd just place all of the blocks that I needed. I gave up on that pretty early too, because it was taking a long time and I was worried that I'd forget blocks. This is the second time that I almost gave up. Stop crying, it won't do any good. And anyway, you have a lot of work to do, starting right now. But then I decided, maybe I'll go back to my first idea of doing all of the textures manually. I went into the Minecraft file, got all of the block textures, and brought them into Affinity Designer. This would probably work in Inkscape 2, which is a free program. I was able to distribute all of the textures side by side to create a sprite sheet, and conveniently, they were still in alphabetical order, which made organizing them really easy. I exported that and brought it into Affinity Photo to find a way to average all of the colors. And luckily, there is a blur option that does exactly that. Affinity lets you make things called macros, which basically record actions you do so you can repeat them more easily. So I selected a block, averaged it, and then moved the selection 16 pixels. Now I could press one button and repeat all those steps. 
So I made another macro that repeats that action 10 times. Then I made another macro that repeats it 10 more times. So now with a single click, I could average 100 blocks and there were over 800 blocks. So this method only took a minute. Back in Blender, I made a one meter cube and duplicated it so I had as many cubes as there were squares in the sprite sheet. I selected all of them, went into edit mode, and projected from view while looking straight ahead. Then I could basically move them in the UV editor until they lined up pretty well. Then I used this option here to snap them to the nearest pixel so they were pixel perfect. The other sides were still stretched because of how I projected it, so I selected all of the edge points based on their normal direction and put them in the right place in the UV editor. I also had to check all of the blocks with multiple sides to make sure that they were actually using the right texture. Since they were all using the same material and texture, I could change their roughness all at the same time. I even added an option to use the sprite sheet as a bump map by setting it to linear instead of closest. I brought in the sprite sheet with the averaged colors too, and it was the same size so everything lined up automatically. Okay. Now that I had all of the pieces to complete the project, all I had to do was make a node group for all 363 full-size Minecraft blocks, select their average color, and say what number they were in the collection of blocks. Yeah, that's it. That's all I had to do. And I decided that wasn't enough work, so I also named all of the blocks. When all of that was completed, I put it into a group and plugged it into the Instance on Points node, and it finally worked! To test it out, I went and bought some donuts to photoscan. It was my first time using Polycam, but the results still came out really good. The way I had the group set up meant that I could mute any of the blocks that I didn't want to use, so I sorted them into categories like natural blocks that don't need crafting, utility blocks like furnaces, and valuables like ore and diamond blocks. Then I could toggle them on and off to decide which ones to use. I was so excited that it worked, and I started adding more features to customize it, and then I showed it to Ben on Discord to get his input on a few problems that I was having, and he responded with a way of sorting the blocks automatically, without having to manually pick each color and index, like how I just spent a whole entire day doing. Okay, so I didn't need to do a lot of the work that I did, but honestly, I wasn't even mad because this new method opened up a lot of possibilities. It's hard to explain completely, but basically it's capturing the color of each block face and then using the RGB channels to place it in 3D space, like I explained earlier. Then each point is given a new index based on its position, and when we pick the blocks we want, we can use the new indices to accurately pull the block with the closest color. It's super cool being able to see all of the blocks lined up by color. This is what it looks like if we use HSV instead of RGB. One axis is hue, this way it gets more pale, and it gets darker at the bottom. So after I switched everything to use this new method, I wanted more ways of controlling the color. I used the Images as Planes add-on to bring some pictures into Blender. One of the issues with how color works is that we only get the color of the nearest face. So when this plane is made of only one face, it'll be a single color. So I threw in a subdivide node to add some more geometry, and this solved the problem for now. I also made a few color palettes so people could add custom colors to their models more easily. I've used this method in a lot of my other videos. Basically, you can set your object to use this image for the color, and then go into the UV editor. I like to scale everything down to zero so it's a single point, and then you can hit G to drag it around and make it whatever color you want. If you want a face to have a different color, just select that face and move it to a different spot on the palette. I made this other palette that shows where all of the Minecraft blocks fit, so it can be used as reference if you want to choose something specific, like a grass block. You can also hit U to project from view to color models with gradients. I also made it so you can use vertex colors to paint your object. Go to Object Data Properties and under Attributes, click the plus button. This should add a new attribute called Color. Then we can make our node tree use the color attribute instead of the image. Go into Vertex Paint mode and now we can change the color of any point on our model. I tested this out by quickly modeling a mushroom and it worked pretty well. One other thing I wanted to add was some randomness for when you don't want gradients to look so clean and when you want a wider variety of blocks instead of just a single one. This was as easy as adding noise to the image color to push it around. If we use the factor, the blocks move around, but the colors don't change much. If we use color, then the color of our blocks will change a little bit more. I wanted to make it easier for people to use this as building reference, so I made it so you can view blocks by layer, which would help people build things from the bottom up. The only way I could find to view block quantities was in the spreadsheet. Every block has its own ID, so you can delete everything that doesn't equal that number, and then you can see how many of those blocks are in the model. You still have to scroll through to find the ID of each one you want to count, but it works for now. Hopefully I can find a better way to do that in the future. 
If you add a realized instance node at the end, you can also convert this to a mesh if you want to export the model. I'm hoping to add things to this over time, like finding a way to get the color of our object without having to use an image texture, adding more blocks like staircases, and if possible, I'd like to be able to import things straight into Minecraft. One week later, it's finally done and you saw my process, so now we can look at some of the possible use cases. The easiest way to get good results is to convert existing models. I like using the Sketchfab add-on because it lets you download models without ever leaving Blender, and they have a decent amount of free photo scans, which work pretty well because they all have image textures. I found this scan of a person's face, and the subtlety of the colors is so cool to look at. I also found this rotisserie chicken. You can use other models too, but if they don't come with image textures, then you'll have to bake one or add your own colors. I added my own color to this bridge model. If you set the resolution to 1 meter, then it's the same size as Minecraft, and you can hit F3 and go into walk mode, and actually walk around the model to see what the scale is like. This is also really useful for text. You can add in a text object and extrude it in the settings over here, and when you add the node tree, you can view it as blocks. Now you can set it to any font you have on your computer and make some awesome custom signs in your Minecraft world. If you want to change the color, you can convert the text to a mesh and use the coloring methods I talked about before. My favorite way to use it is by modeling in real time. For example, here is a quick house that I made and textured all at the same time. I used some noise to randomize the colors a little, and I made a separate object with a displacement modifier on it to create some bushes. If you know some simple modeling techniques, you can use them to make really complex stuff in Minecraft now. You can even use a bunch of primitive shapes and still get good results. And just to show that it can be done, I built one of my creations directly in Minecraft. So what do you think? Does Block Blender seem useful to you? If you think it is, consider liking and subscribing. Like I said before, you can download this from Gumroad and Blender Market, and I'm also sharing the free version and some of the previous project files on Patreon, where you can also watch my videos early and get coupon codes for free products. I also donate some of that money to environmental causes each month. If you liked this video, consider watching one of these ones next. Have a good one!